The United States is definitely going through a rough time and the pandemic isn't making it easier. You see, a lot of Americans were already in poverty before the pandemic hit. And what has actually managed to unfortunately happen is that the pandemic has hit at a very bad time. You see, the poverty rate in America was actually at its record low. This doesn't mean that many Americans weren't still living in poverty. It just means that relatively compared to the last years, that the poverty rate was somewhat low. However, since the pandemic has actually begun, the poverty rate has somewhat skyrocketed and this isn't going to get any better because not only has poverty skyrocketed, but it seems that the poverty has actually skyrocketed permanently. And as we all know, the pandemic has actually made some temporary changes, permanent changes. As we can see by this article, it says US poverty hit a record low before the pandemic recession. The share of Americans in poverty in 2019 declined and the median incomes were the highest on record, a Census Bureau report showed. It does say that the share of Americans living in poverty fell to 10.5% in 2019, down 1.3% from 2018. And these are the lowest estimates since 1959. And household incomes actually managed to increase all the way up to 60. So we know that the poverty wasn't that bad but it's actually just expanded what was already going to happen. The rich and the wealthy are actually getting richer whilst the poor are still getting poorer. And this is something that has been happening for a very long time. But now with the recession, many people don't have access to jobs that they need and the poverty is actually skyrocketing. The populations who are hit the hardest by coronavirus are those with the least stable access to insurance coverage, said Catherine Baker, the Dean of the Harris School Public Policy at the University of Chicago. And we all know that minority and disadvantaged groups are often more likely to have underlying health conditions and are more likely to work in jobs that cannot be performed from the safety of the homes. And that means that these people unfortunately were either laid off or left exposed on the front lines. And we know that jobs that you can't do from your home are most likely blue collar jobs, jobs like being a janitor. And I was saying blue collar jobs, we do know that some of these have actually been moved off. You see, everyone is moving towards the work from home environment. And as these jobs slowly and surely get phased out, we know that it leaves a lot of people without work. And right now, the poverty is very bad. As you can see right here, 8 million Americans slipped into poverty amid the coronavirus pandemic, a new study says. And this new study is actually really interesting. You see, the paper is here and I've been reading through this and it's actually pretty shocking at what's going on. And if we look at this and as we go into this, you're going to see that the American population almost certainly needs another stimulus check because if it doesn't, I genuinely don't know what's going to happen to the economy because COVID-19 has d almost certainly caused some long-term effects on the economy that will be felt for a very long time if there isn't some sort of external intervention that takes place with the economy. But first, let's read this article. It states that the number of Americans living in poverty grew by 8 million since May according to a Columbia University study, which found an increase in poverty rates after early coronavirus relief ended without more to follow. And we all know that the coronavirus relief was basically the stimulus check. So the Federal Cares Act, which gave the Americans the one-time stimulus check of $1,200 and unemployed workers an extra $600 a week, was successful at offsetting growing poverty rates in the spring. But the problem is that the coronavirus is still here and now that the money's run out, people are still once again moving towards poverty. It says that the CARES Act, despite its flaws, was broadly successful in preventing large increases in poverty, which is good. But the Federal CARES Act is now gone, and now the families that use the money are still somewhat struggling. Because like we said, although the coronavirus put the country on lockdown, some jobs just haven't come back, and this isn't good. So. The big takeaway is that for a while, the unprecedented government expansion of unemployment insurance and a stimulus payment did manage to do a successful job of keeping families out of poverty, which is good. The stimulus actually managed to work. But as you can see, 
the lack of unemployment is actually really bad. People will most likely need another stimulus if we don't somewhat manage to defeat the coronavirus. And it also continues to say, high levels of poverty, food insecurity and hardship will likely intensify in the absence of further income support. So the problem is, is that the Stimulus and Cares Act was good in its first sort of run. But the problem is, is that if we don't get another stimulus check, if there isn't some unemployment bonus, then more and more Americans are going to be slipping into poverty. And this is how the wealth gap is being widened. More and more people are moving into poverty. You have to understand that this is 8 million Americans and 8 million is a very large amount of Americans. Even though America has got a huge population, 8 million is a shockingly insane amount of numbers and you have to understand that surveys like this don't tend to include everyone this could be an estimate number this number might not even be accurate it could actually be more so let's take a look at the actual paper because what this paper shows us and the graph that it shows us is definitely definitely scary so i'm going to show you right here so this actually looks somewhat confusing but I'll try to do my best to explain exactly what this graph means. So as you can see right here, we can see the monthly poverty rates before the CARES Act. And we all know right here is where the coronavirus actually started. So what happened was COVID-19 struck mid-March and of course the poverty rate went straight up to 19 percent okay i'm pretty sure this is 19 percent or whatever this value is it shot up to 19 which is a huge increase and right here okay this you can see that right here this line is the figure that it currently is you see this figure is somewhat the real value of people that are in poverty and the value that would be if there was no stimulus but because there was a stimulus this is the current value However, we can see that this value is somewhat increasing. So we can see that this is with the CARES Act right here. And then we can see that this is without the CARES Act. So without the stimulus, we can see that poverty would be absolutely insane. Poverty would be absolutely insane. And right now we know that another stimulus isn't coming. And the poverty rate seems to be on an uptrend. As you can see, ever since the pandemic hit, even with the stimulus, the poverty rates are still going upwards and it doesn't look like the politicians are actually going to manage to get a deal. And this really does suck because there are people that need it. And the graph I'm going to show you in the next few minutes is going to be even worse because it covers those in deep poverty. And if you're in deep poverty, you really, really struggle. So this graph clearly shows us that if we didn't have the CARES Act, the amount of Americans living in poverty would be very, very bad. Now, of course, the figure would decline as some of the COVID would, you know, sort of disappear. But we do know that even with the CARES Act, it's still higher than what it was before. And we can't really have just a bunch of millions of more Americans just unemployed and just straight into poverty. Things like this don't bode well for the economy. So let's look at this second graph here. And we can see that this is the monthly trends in deep poverty before and the CARES Act transfers. And it says deep poverty is measured as having resources less than 50% of the poverty threshold. And yeah, so it shows that, you know, once they've given people the stimulus, it kind of actually helped ridiculously. Um, pulling people out of deep poverty and deep poverty is really bad so i'm glad that people were able to get it however we can see that those in poverty if they don't receive it it could once again go to the high levels because with the second wave and another lockdown things just 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 don't look good you see this graph doesn't seem too different as you can see but when it comes to this graph we can see that once again values are 15.3 and this value is 17.3 so we know that the stimulus is most certainly needed so it says that thus while the cares act succeeded in blunting the rise in total poverty our estimates suggest that it was not as successful as reducing the levels of deep poverty and it may be in large part due to the imperfect coverage rates of the cares act income transfers many low-income families in particular report that they did not receive stimulus checks while millions of the Americans who lost their jobs after the crisis did not receive unemployment benefits. So as a result, deep poverty, as appears, to steadily increase to around 7.1%.
to the pre-crisis level, you know, relative to 6.2, which is once again, not good. So we have much more people now in deep levels of poverty and we have more people that are going to be even more poverty as you can see. So right now, America isn't in a good state. No matter what you're seeing, these are the statistics. These are the real studies that are going on behind closed doors and you need to pay attention. If millions of Americans are headed towards more poverty and if the coronavirus is making the situation entirely worse, you need to stay one step ahead ensuring that when it comes to protecting you and your family that your financial future is actually decent because financial stability is something that you almost certainly need to have in today's uncertain day and age. And I would recommend somehow, some way, at least making sure you're at least saving your money, managing your money and you're up to date on how the financial system actually works.